praise the Lord. Greetings to you all in the matchless name of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's the day that God has given us to worship His name. This is the day that God has given us to exalt His name. A new month that God has provided us and we need to thank God for what He has done thus far. Maybe in the last month you have gone through lots of troubles, lots of sickness, health conditions where you are not able to cope up in your life. But you are here in this month of October. And when we look back into our lives, we can see how faithful, how great our God, how wonderful our God. Let's all look to the Lord in prayer and say to the Lord, Lord, here we are at the beginning of this month. And we praise you, Master. We love you, Master. We give you glory and honor to you, Master. Come and dwell in our lives. Come have your way with the Holy Spirit. Come have your way with the power of your life, Father. Let's all look to the Lord in prayer, my dear church. Let's all uh, recollect last month that God has provided us and this month, the new month that God has given us. There are many people who could not see this month. There are many people who could not see this very day of October 2nd. But God has given us this day to worship His name, to recollect wonderful things that God has given us. To ponder upon the love of Christ. To ponder upon the marvelous things that He has given us. Let's all look to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you Lord for this wonderful time that you have given us to worship your name, Father. Thank you for the new month. And Lord, from, uh, from January onwards till now, Father Lord, you are so faithful in our lives, Father. Lord, we never know, Lord, we don't know, Master, what this month will be for us, for our lives. But we'll know that, Lord, you are a God who sits on the throne and you will do according to your will in our lives, Father. Your will is so grateful, Father. Your will is so powerful in our lives, Lord. Sometimes, Lord, we go against your will, Father, Lord. We do all kinds of work and at the end of the day, we come to you. But Lord, let your will be done in our lives. Let your will be done in our pastor's life. Let your will be done in our church this month, Father. believe that Lord you will empower your Holy Spirit we believe that Lord you will send your angels to this place and let the angels enjoy the presence of God let the angels enjoy the power of God let you come down Lord let the heavens come down this morning Help us to carry your presence. Lord, we submit this prayer. Every glory, every honor is given to you, to you alone, Master. We submit this prayer into your mighty hands in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16, it says, Rejoice always. Pray continually, give thanks to all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord. God has protected us the last month. God has given us a new month for us so that we can rejoice. We can rejoice always. Give thanks to the Lord in all circumstances, in trouble, tribulations, the, the, the things that we could not cope up. Give thanks to the Lord. 
for God for this is God's will for us in Christ Jesus and also in first Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 24 it says the one who called you is faithful and he will do it the one who is the one who called you my dear church my dear brothers and sisters the one who called you is faithful and he, his will be done in your life let's all worship his name let's all magnify his name this is not the time to sit idle but this is a time to enjoy rejoice in his presence rejoice in his mighty works We love you, Lord. We thank you, Master. Oh, Rekira Baba. Rekira Shikira. with the heart the Lord of my soul Lord of my soul worship is
Lord, we bless your name. Lord, I worship your holy name. Dear church, this is a time where we worship his name. This is a time we say, Lord, you are holy, holy, holy. Help us to be holy in our lives, Father. Lord, bless the Lord, oh my soul. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Lord, we are here to worship you, Master. We are here to say that, Lord, we worship you. Oh, thank you, Jesus.
it's all about your presence it's all about your life it's all about your life father lord lord it's all about your cross it's all about your death it's all about your resurrection it's all about you doing great works in the lives of the people it's all about you master lord we humble ourselves master lord we humble ourselves we decrease our name father and increase your name it's all about you it's all about you yes it's all about you lord book of Titus chapter 3 verses 3 following it says at one time we too were foolish disobedient deceived and enslaved by all kinds of passion and pleasures we lived in a malaise and envy being hated and be hated hating one another but when the kindness and the love of God our Savior appeared he saved us not because of righteous things we have done but because of his mercy he saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit whom he poured out on on us gener generously through Jesus Christ our Savior so that have been justified by his grace we might become heirs having the hope of eternal life this is a trustworthy saving and i want you to stress this thing so that those who have trusted in god may be careful to devote themselves to do what is good these things are excellent and profitable for everyone what a powerful words by apostle paul in the book of Titus at one time we were in a darkness at one time we were in the in the, in the, in the pit where we, there is no one could save us at one time we were foolish at one time we were disobedient at one time we were deceived at one time we were enslaved by all kinds of patterns of this world But verse 4 is a powerful word for all of us. But when the kindness and the love of God, our Savior, appears, everything has changed in our lives. The darkness has turned into light. The sin has been covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. When he appeared in our lives because of his mercy, because of his renewal of the Holy Spirit, washing and gave us a rebirth through Son Jesus Christ. Dear church, we are the co workers of Jesus Christ. We are the co-workers that Jesus has called us for a purpose. At one time, Lord, at one time, we were all are in darkness where we could not see any light. We were in the worldly patterns, enjoying the desires and the pleasures of the world. But now as we are in the sanctuary of his almighty, we are at his feet in the lightness. God is light. We were in the darkness and He showed us a light in that darkness through the Son Jesus Christ. And we are so grateful to you, Lord. We are so grateful to you, Master. Lord, when we are in a pit, Father Lord, where there is no one to save us, but you have picked up from that mighty clay where you have picked up from that pit master and gave us an eternal life a life that is worthy enough a life that is precious a life that is, cannot be given by any people in this world a eternal 
life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. King of endless words, no one could express how much you deserve. Don't we can hold all I have is yours, every single breath. I bring you more than a song for a song. about you yes lord and it's all about you jesus i'm so in love for the things i made and it's all about you and it's all about you Lord, it's all about you in our lives, Father. Lord, we are coming back to you. Coming back to you, Father, Lord. Maybe the last month, we were in the world, Father. We were in the patterns of the world. But Lord, you are so faithful to give us a new month for us. A new day for us. We are coming back to you, Father. We are coming back to you, Father. To worship you with a heart. Lord, we are so sorry, Lord, for what we have done against you. We are so sorry, Master. We ask you of forgiveness in our lives. Dear church, this is a time to ask forgiveness to the Lord. This is a time, Lord, here we are. Wash away all our sins, Father. Wash our hearts, Father, Lord. Wash our hearts, Lord. We humble ourselves to you. We humble ourselves to you, Father. Dear church, as we look back into our lives, everybody has a story. Everybody has a story when we stepped on from the womb of our mothers everybody has a particular story every story is unique every story is special when i asked anyone in the church when i ask you tell about your testimony you will not start where you have all the cars you have all the all the pleasures right now that you are experiencing but you always start where you are in the darkness where you are in the darkness where you have been filled with the, the sinful character with the desires and pressures of the world from there you tell how Jesus has entered into your life that is what that was your story that's the story and we all have a, a different stories that is unique in the sight of God and unique in the sight of people As we sing this song, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Let's all sing with a heart. Let's all sing with a passion that God has given us. Let's all recollect what he has done on the cross. He's a God Almighty who died on the cross. Who died for you and me. 
who died to give us life who died to give us an eternal life as we sing this song recollect what pain that he has gone through on the cross because of you and me the bible says he is of no sin but he died on the cross he died on the cross my dear church he died on the cross my dear brothers and sisters for you and me if anyone who does not know who jesus is this is the time the gospel the good news is jesus died for you and me jesus died for you and me and rose again on the third day and he has defeated the death and gave you a life which is worthy enough if you are wandering here and there in this world if you are saying my life is in a chaos my life is so lonely where my mother is against me where my father is against me where my siblings are against me but god loves you jesus loves you that's why he died on the cross for you and me that's all sing with her a true heart Jesus hallelujah Bless our sure Jesus is my This is my story. This is my story. This is my song. Raising my Savior. Father, we thank you, Lord, 
that you have created a story for us. The instance which we experienced, Father Lord, is to lift your name high, Father. Lord, we are so in debt to you. We are so grateful to you. We are so thankful to you that you have created a story for us. Lord, this is our story, Master Lord. This is our song. And when we look back into our story, we could understand how grateful you are. How wonderful you have done a mighty act on the cross and died for you, died for us, Father. This is my story. Oh, Jesus, hallelujah. Perfect delight, visions of rapture now burst on my side. Angels descending, bring from above. Powerful lyrics this is. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for Son Jesus Christ who came into this world, gave us life. Gave us life. What a submission that is. What a submission of Jesus Christ to his Father. Lord, this is our story. This is our strong. We believe that, Lord, you are being with us right now, empowering us with your spirit, recollecting, telling us to know the reality in our lives, Father. The way that you have created us for a purpose, for a task, for a mission. We believe that, Lord, we will catch hold of you. We will catch hold of your hand. And you lead us, Father, Lord, in any road that we go, Father. Thank you, Lord, for the wonderful time of worship. We believe that, Lord, the angels were singing along with us. The power of the Holy Spirit has manifested in the lives of the people, Father. Lord. As we hear your word, we believe that, Lord, the word will penetrate into the hearts of the people. Thank you, Lord, for answering our prayers. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. joy to be in his presence what a what a joy and what a happiness that we get in his presence when you look into the world around us we see that God is so gracious and we have lived in this world for quite some time we will live in this world for quite some times 
when god calls us we need to go but when we come into his presence what a joy what a delight to be in his presence when we look into the world around us joy and happiness of this world can be of a limited period of time but the joy that comes in his presence is everlasting we can experience day after day we can experience second by second minute by minute what a joy for today's meditation let's turn our bibles to psalms 89 verses 40 48 psalms 89 verse 48 who can live and not see death or who can escape the power of the grave let me read it again psalms 89 verse 48 who can live and not see death or who can escape the power of the grave the power of the grave father we thank you lord for this one particular verse that you have given to us this morning your word penetrates your word manifests your word is a powerful word that can speak even today father believe that lord and we believe as a church that you will speak to us this morning in jesus name amen the words that we have spoken in from psalms 89 verse 48 is a words which talks about death a verse that talks about a grave a verse that talks about a road that leads us to death a road a ordinary road that leads us to death a ordinary road that can that no one can escape and we could see in the psalms 89 verse 48 we could see a psalmist is asking a question to each and every one of us dear life and light church it's a question for each and every one of us who can live and see and not see death and who can escape the power of the grave he is asking the psalmist is asking a question who can escape the death who can escape the power of the grave and the answer is no one and the answer is no one can escape the death it's 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 always there in us it's always there before us and after us when you it's it, it, the, most of the scholars say that it is near the door of our lives it's near the door of our lives when you open it it will come inside death that is always at the door of any person death awaits every man and woman it never bargain for time never shares its mysteries never say when it will come the people who live in this world have to face the death nobody in this world can say that i will not face the death many people are afraid of death as well many people are longing for death because of the trials and tribulations that they are going through many people are waiting for the death because of the health conditions many people are waiting for the death to come so that they could not afford or they could not cope up with the pain that they are going through we cannot escape the power of the grave that's the reality that's the reality my dear church we cannot escape the grave before we go into the grave there is a task to fulfill in our lives there is a task to fulfill my dear church there is an extraordinary task as we are living an ordinary life as we are leading a road of ordinary life we have to we have to catch hold of the extraordinary task before we go into that grave Today I entitle my message an ordinary life a ordinary road of life for an extraordinary task part 2 
a ordinary an ordinary road of life for an extraordinary task part 2 in the last week we talked about part 1 where we talked about the life of john the baptist we talked about john the baptist and and we got a a, a powerful insights from the life of john the baptist and also we have connected with jesus christ as well today we'll be talking about the death of John the Baptist. We are talking about the death of John the Baptist. Let's look at the life of John the Baptist. He led a life of an ordinary, a road of ordinary life. And he catch hold the extraordinary task to prepare a way for the Messiah. Prepare a way for the Messiah. He had an ordinary life of his birth. He had an ordinary life wandering in the wilderness. He was with God in that wilderness. And, uh, and a proper time has come to him to come and share the sermon, share the preaching or share the message that he is preparing for the Messiah to come to his people. That's what we have learned in the last week. Today, I want to focus on the death of John the Baptist. The death of John the Baptist. When we look into the life of uh, John the Baptist, he led a, a short period of time. Maybe 40 years or maybe 45 years. He led a time. Maybe for uh, till 30 years he was in the wilderness acquiring all the knowledge from Jesus Christ. And uh, he was on an extraordinary task to fulfill to go into the people, tell about forgiveness, tell about repentance, tell about Jesus denying himself and exalting his name. Today, as Psalm 89 verse 47, 48 says, we can, who can live and not see death? Who can escape the power of the grave? Even John the Baptist could not escape the power of the grave. He has led a good life. He has led a life of a, a pastor or a missionary or an evangelist. Led a life. But when you look into the death of John the Baptist, it was very cruel. He could not escape the grave. Let's look at Mark chapter 6 verse 17 to 19. It says, For Herod himself have gave orders to have John arrested. And he had him bound and put in prison. He did this because of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, whom he had, he had married. For John has been saying to Herod, it's not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. So Herodias nursed a grudge against John and wanted to kill, kill him. But she was not able to do it not able to do let's look at the background of this of his death of G, of, of, of John the Baptist the death when you look into the death of John the Baptist which, which is very complicated and very disturbing as well it's a time where there, there was so much of chaos happening at that point of time where John was there, King Herod was there, and his wife was there. And Mark chapter 16 verse 17 to 19 indicates that there was a marriage happening between Herod and Herodes. And where we could see that John the Baptist or the John was criticizing that marriage. He was criticizing the marriage. When you look into the life of Herod, Herod was, Herod was marrying a Herodes, who was his niece, as well as the wife of his stepbrother, Herod Philip. According to the scriptures, in Leviticus chapter 20, verse 21, it is strictly forbidden for a man to marry his brother's wife. That's why 
here we could understand that john is criticizing john is making a appeal to the hero saying that what you are doing is wrong what you are doing is absolutely wrong in leviticus chapter 20 verse 21 says it's forbidden for a man to marry his brother's wife let's look at the life of hero's father hero the great took control hero's father could took control of palestine in 37 bc after slaying thousands of jews during his 34 years reign he married at least 10 women in which he lived in a polygamy polygamy is something a practice or a custom of having more than one wife or husband at the same time he executed one wife one mother-in-law two brothers-in-law three sons and anyone who opposed him hero's father was a brutal king he was a cruel king he practiced polygamy he was a person who killed his own family one of the new testament books behind the scene of the new testament it says it is safer to be hero's pick than a hero's son than a hero's son as a teenager hero was a person who was who hero was promised his father father's throne but instead of having him the throne he was given a role of subordinate ruler around the sea of galilee his brothers archelaus inherited kingship in jerusalem and promoted carry on the father's reign in contrast of all these things now the hero the son who is reigning the place over there is getting married to herodus and it's so it's not a lawful it's a sin comparing to leviticus chapter 20 verse 21 that's where john the baptist come into place that's where john the baptist come into place and making them understand that what you are doing is wrong a extraordinary task of telling people that you are doing it wrong against god against god in contrast of all these things john the baptist come into place john the baptist came into the scene making them understand that what they are doing is wrong mark chapter 6 verse 20 it says because he wrote feared john and protected him knowing him to be a righteous and holy man when he wrote here john he was greatly puzzled yet he like to listen to him here we could understand about from this passage we could understand that hero is fearing john because at that time john was in a limelight john was in a popularity john after after he was born he came into the people had an extraordinary task of revealing who messiah is he was preparing a way and people are so caught up with the john and, he, and his name was so popular, even Hero also respected that. But the problem is the wife. Problem is the wife. Wife was so grudge about John. He, she wants to kill John. But with, the, with her authority, he cannot, she cannot do that. She cannot do that. Here, when you look into the, the story or when you look into the incident which is happening over there, here John is insulting and also making them embarrassed between the people saying that what your marriage is not in the right in the eyes of God. Not in the right in the eyes of God. Wife is so passionate in killing John. Here we could understand that John never compromised for his ministry. He's not compromised for his ministry. When he sees sin over there, he tells that he's a sin against God. He has an attitude of telling people that you need to repent. 
because what you are doing you are you are in the worldly pleasures you are in a worldly pleasures where you need to turn towards god he has a heart of telling he never compromise in his ministry but when you look into the herod's life we could see that he is sailing on a two boats he is caught up between concise and also continuous wife as well Con- continuous wife as well here at one at one side he was so caught up with john and his kind of a kind of acts that acts that is that he is doing and one side his wife his wife verse 21 of mark chapter 6 finally a proper time has come on his birthday herod gave a banquet for his high officials and military commanders and the leading men of galilee did you notice the word in verse 21 of mark chapter 6 we could understand that it's a proper time that means that wife is waiting for the proper time to kill john to kill john she already know that husband has two weaknesses one is lust and one is pride she all she already know that is his husband he rode have two weaknesses one is lust and one is pride so at the birthday banquet that's the proper time to make herod to command john to be killed she made an arrangement of sending her teenage daughter from her previous marriage into the room to dance seductively before her stepfather lust filled herod's eyes and filled his heart and he made a foolish promise to the girl see how when you look into this act of the of the of the story goes on one sin leads to the other sin one sin leads to the other sin there is a connection between one sin to the other sin in one sin to the other sin this is a reminder for each and every one of us this morning that your sin may lead to different sins your sin may lead to different sin suppose for example you talk lie on a particular place that lie leads to the other sin other lie so here we could understand from the story from the incident which is happening in john's um, life and also king herod's life we could understand that his wife is playing an important vital role here to kill john the baptist can you imagine in verse 22 23 of mark chapter 6 when the daughter of herod is came in and danced she pleased herod and his dinner guests the king king herod said to the girl ask me for everything you want and i will give it to you and he promised her with a oath whatever you ask i will give you up to the half my kingdom that was the promise she when you look into the hero king hero's life he was so filled with the lust he was so filled with the pride that he has the authority that he has today in this world many people are filled with the lust many people are filled with the pride that they have the money that they have the popularity that they have it's a call for each and every one of us to reexamine our lives to recollect our lives to to make it possible to have a relationship with god to god that's what he wrote promise and offer he wrote us a chance to call for a john's execution the dance of sin turned to the dance of death the dance of sin in the sight of king herod and the sight of the officials the dance of sin of that daughter have turned into a dance of death 
hero fell into the temptations and ordered John the Baptist to be killed. That's where we see in verse 24 and 25 of Mark chapter 6. In the above explanation, we could understand that John Baptist, John the Baptist was beheaded in the prison. And he gave it to the girl and the girl gave it to the her mother. Here, when you look into the incident, we could, my focus in is on John the Baptist. John the Baptist, my focus, who is called for an ordinary life, who is called, who is on a road of an ordinary life, but he had a task. He had an extraordinary task till he goes, till he goes to the grave. And the Bible says in Psalms 89 verse 48, who can live and not see death or who can escape the power of the grave? John the Baptist did not escape the power of the grave. He did not escape the power of the grave. Two important lessons before we wind up. Two important lessons but that we can know about John the Baptist who led a, a ordinary road of life for an extraordinary task. For an extraordinary task. Two important lessons that we can learn. Two important vital, vital lessons that we can learn from John the Baptist who took an ordinary road to become an extraordinary person with a task but had a cruel death. But had a cruel death. Sometimes we we think about people who are dying. We think about people who are dying where he led a good life. He led a life having a relationship with God but he, he died a cruel death. There are many times in our lives we talk about people who are dying. When, when, when the corona, when the COVID-19 has struck the people in India, we could see that many pastors, many pastors, many ministers of God had a cruel death. Even though they had a relationship with God, even though they had a, a connection with God, but they had a cruel death. Two important lessons that we can learn from John the Baptist who took an ordinary road to become an extraordinary person with a task. First important point, the road we take is to confronting wrong that happens. The road that we take, we, need, we have a task, we have an extraordinary task to confront the wrong. When you look into the life of John the Baptist, we could understand that as he was leading a life of an ordinary life, he always confronted that is wrong. He always said that what you are doing is wrong. He always said that whatever you are living, and he could not mind whether it is a king, whether it is a servant, or whether it is anyone in his life. He had an extraordinary task of confronting, saying that it is wrong, it is right, saying that it is wrong. What is happening? Here we could understand that from the hero that hero this marriage, he was confronting that what you are doing is wrong. John the Baptist was a mission of making a way for Jesus. He had a call and a mission and he goes on the way telling people that what you are doing is wrong. You and I need to learn a lesson as we are an ordinary people. As we are cannot escape the death. It can be after this. It can be after one month. It can be after one year. It can be after ten years. Death always waits for us. But before we go into that grave, we have an extraordinary task to be fulfilled. That task is to confront the people those who are doing wrong. You see, most of the churches, we see that they are so, so caught up with money, so caught up with popularity, so caught up with, we are here to confront them. We are here to say them that this is wrong. There are many churches who are always speaking about prosperity gospel. We are here to confront them. 
come out from the four walls of the of the world we could see that there are many people who are doing who are who are in a lustful lustful places who are in a prideful places like herod who are killing people who are killing sacrificing children and we are here for an extraordinary task of saying to the people that what you are doing is wrong one of the important qualities of a christian or or a true christian is to make people know that what is wrong and what is right here john the baptist he did not be silent he did not be silent of whatever the marriage is happening let it happen no but he quoted from the old testament saying that what you are doing is wrong is wrong that's a wake up call for us an extraordinary task for us an extraordinary task for us as we are leading a ordinary road of life an extraordinary task is to confront people those who are doing wrong what about your children what about your wife what about your husband what about your your children in the church if they are doing wrong sometimes many of the parents they don't say what their children are children are doing they don't say what is right and what is wrong they don't confront nowadays there is in the schools and colleges we should not beat children in some sense it is good some sense it is bad confronting is something where you are letting the child know that what is wrong and what is right as a parents we have a responsibility to tell us to tell our children tell our son and daughters that what whenever they do wrong to tell them that is wrong that is wrong many many children are spoiled these days many pastors kids are spoiled because they always think that the pastor's sons and daughters are so spirit filled and and they focus on the outward people rather than the inside people rather than inside people confronting is something where you are taking a responsibility of an extraordinary task making people know what is right and what is wrong the second important point that we can learn from this passage is the road we take is not about how long we live but how we live the road we take is not about how long we live but how we live when you look into the john's life we can understand that he did not live a long life he did not live a long life but when we look into the life of an extraordinary task before him we could say that how we live how he lived is an extraordinary thing it's an extraordinary thing maybe he had done his ministry for at like least five to six years but that was for but that was powerful short period of time but he knows the extraordinary task before him when you look into the death his death was so cruel he was beheaded by king herod by king his wife but the road we take the road that he took it's not about how long he lived but how he lived matters a lot matters a lot dear church it's not that life will go on but how we live matters a lot in our lives how we live is matters a lot how we live with the extraordinary task before us matters a lot the extraordinary task is to spread the gospel the extraordinary task is to tell about jesus who died on the cross and rose again on the third day to the people making way for the people to know who jesus is that's the extraordinary task that is before us we may live for a short period of time from life to the death there is a journey inside it that journey should be a fruitful journey that journey should know that we have an extraordinary task to be fulfilled death comes for everyone 
before that death comes do you live a life which is worthy enough it's not the matter people live for 120 years 130 years the matter is you live for 130 years or 140 years the question is how you lived that's the that's the vital point a person who has lived for one year or two years or, or, or 30 years or 35 years is more grateful having a relationship with God rather than 130 years or 140 years. The road we take is not about how long we live but how we live. But how we live. These two points again I'm coming back to Jesus Christ. Again I'm coming back to the gospel. Again, I'm coming back to that good news about Jesus Christ. When you look into the first verse, the road we take is to confront wrong that happens. When you look into the life of Jesus Christ, we could understand that he confronted whenever there is a wrong in the sight of people, in the sight, in, 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 in crowd, in disciples, in the Jews' authorities. He confronted that. He had an extraordinary task of conf confronting. Even though he showed love, even though he was so faithful, but he also confronted. That's why many a times he was he, he was he was uh, telling the telling Peter, "Go away, Satan." He was confronting because these disciples are always thinking from below rather than above. They were always thinking that. They're, they're not thinking what Jesus was thinking. Jesus was thinking from above, the heavenly perspective. But these disciples are thinking from below. Sometimes we also think from below. This, ha this can happen. This may not happen. This will, what is impossible for God? Everything is possible in His name. And also, we have a task to fulfill. And when we take an example of Jesus Christ, as he confront people, those who are doing wrong, you and I have an extraordinary task of, 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 of comfort, uh, co confronting the wrong that is happening around the world. The next important point that we can understand, the road we take is not about how long we live, but how we live. Taking, a, taking again the example of Jesus Christ. He lived a short period of time. How he lived matters. Today, October 2nd, we could understand that we are praising God. We are praising Son Jesus Christ because the matter is how well he lived on this earth. One of the greatest acts is his dying on the cross for you and me. How well he lived. How wonderful he lived. How marvelous he lived. How lovable he lived. Dying on the cross for you and me, for our lives. He bore our sins. How well he lived. On 2nd of October of 2022, we are learning about him. We are relying upon him. We are depending upon him. Because the matter is how he lived. a life of worthy and dying for our lives. He sacrificed his own life for our lives. He knows the task. He had an extraordinary task which has been received by his, which is received from his father. And he was on a mission. He was on a task. He was on a purpose when he lived on this earth. What a great God that we serve. leading an ordinary road of life with an extraordinary task is to the road we take is to confront him wrong that happens the road we take is not about how long we live but how we live let's look to the Lord in prayer Father we thank you Lord for this wonderful time You have given us 
to relay upon you, Master. Lord, here we are in your sanctuary. What a great insights that you have given us. That Lord, the Psalm 89, 48 says, Who can live and not see death? Or who can escape the power of the grave? That's the reality, Lord. At one point of time, we will face that death. At one point of time, we will go into that grave, my dear brothers and sisters. At one point of time, we will face the death, my dear church. The journey that you are going, is it worthy enough? Is it worthy enough to catch hold of an extraordinary task that is before us? Last week we talked about the life of John the Baptist. Today, a new day, a new month God has given us to relay upon the death of John the Baptist. Even though he had lived a short period of time focusing on his mission, focusing on his call to prepare a way for the Messiah to come, but he died a cruel death. Dear church, we never know what our death will be. We never know the reality is we will face death some other, other day. But the journey towards that matters a lot. Two important lessons that we could learn from the death of John the Baptist and we could relate to Jesus Christ as well. The road we take needs to be confronted, confronting others. We need to say that what they are doing is wrong. If you find anyone, if you find your child, if you find your brother or sister who is against God, confront them, say them that is wrong. That is an extraordinary task that God is giving us this morning. Extraordinary task that God is giving us. And also, the road that we take Jesus is a Messiah who died on the cross, spreading the good news. How we live matters. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your life. When we look back into your life, Father, you're a God who is always faithful. You're a God who always confronts us when we do wrong. Dear parents, dear sisters and brothers, an extraordinary task is to, as we are the disciples, as we are the co-workers of Jesus Christ, as we are the ambassadors of Jesus Christ, when anything is happening wrong, we should not be silent, but we need to say them a true way of life. Jesus for the word. Thank you, Jesus, for the word. Thank you, Jesus, for the word, Father. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for the anointing. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Stop. I know he holds my 
Son Jesus Christ, who gave us life for our sins. He gave us an eternal life, a life which is so worthy, Father. The reality is that, Lord, we will face death some or the other day, like John the Baptist. But how we live matters a lot in our lives. Thank you for. The two parts of an ordinary row of life for an extraordinary task where we talked about the birth, the ministry, and the death of John the Baptist and we connected to you, Father. Connected to Jesus Christ. Believe that, Lord, the Holy Spirit is surrendered over here. We could experience the strong power of the Holy Spirit right now, Father. Lord, uh, as, as the disciples are waiting, uh, are, are, we're waiting in that upper room for the revival happens. Lord, help us, Father, Lord, to have that kind of a longing, that kind of a waiting for the revival to come to our church, Father. Thank you for the word. Thank you, Lord, for giving us a new month sunrise thank you Lord for you are about to give new opportunities new desires which is surrounded by you Father thank you Lord for our pastor and their family as they have entered into a new month let it bring forth a blessings for them Father let it bring a great revival in their hearts I pray for families, I pray for youth, adults and children those who are those who have entered into this new month Lord, uh, I don't know what situations that they are going through in their lives we believe that Lord, you will sustain them, you will provide them because you are the Jehovah Jireh and when they call upon the Father, you will hear them Father Jesus. We do pray for pastors, missionaries and evangelists. People those who are doing your work. There are many pastors, evangelists and missionaries and people those who are doing are in a remote place where there is no water. There is no basic needs. Food, clothing and shelter. But Lord, they are on a task of an extraordinary task. They may be in an ordinary road of life, but they are in a limelight. They are in a focus point of extraordinary task to be preparing way for the people so that they can know who Jesus is. Bless them abundantly, Father. Provide them in the name of Jesus. I pray for the people, those who are sick, heal them in the name of Jesus. I pray for people, those who are viewing right now, if they are not able to know who Jesus is, Lord, this is a time, my dear brother. This is a time, my dear sister. Know that Jesus is a Lord. Know that Jesus is a Messiah. Know that Jesus died for you and rose again to give you life. It's getting late, my dear brother. It's getting late, my dear sister. Wake up. Know that Jesus is a true living Thank you for the day, Lord. Thank you for giving us, giving me and my family an opportunity, giving this platform of praising you, magnifying you, and glorifying you. Use us in a mighty way, in a much more greater way in the days to come, Father. Give us good health as well so that, Lord, we can proclaim your word. Dear church, we believe that God has spoken to you. Thank you, Lord, for your presence over here. Thank you, Lord, for answering our prayers. We submit this prayer into your mighty hands. Everyone say, Amen. Amen. May the love of God, grace of Son Jesus Christ, 
in the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit be with us forevermore Amen 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 Thank you one and all for being part of Life and Light English Church We are so thankful to be We are so everyone we are so thankful that God has given us a new month of praising Him worshipping Him rejoicing in Him God has added one more month for us as we go on in this month of October our prayer our church prayer for you is that you will be blessed in Jesus name whatever decisions that you are taking always remind always remember your decisions your life should be in the will of God and we are praying for you and if you are nearby Mahadevpura come and visit us and you will definitely feel like home as we come as you come thank you one and all praise the Lord God bless you